flavor of the day, guys? Depends. It depends on. So I follow them on Instagram, so every day I see the, uh, I see it, and it kind of like I almost had to unfollow them because you, know, you scroll through there, see a flavor of the day, you're like, ah, it's the flavor of the day. I gotta go. I gotta go get it. So flavor of the day. You go with that. Sure. Right, okay, fine. Mini or the kids? Okay. We can do the kids. Yeah. I'm gonna do a mini whisker with uh, Reese's cups, top of caramel. Does that sound good? Okay. Did you wanna do the hot caramel or sea salt? Sea salt. Yeah. 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 My first time. Yeah. Episode of the Scoop. Joining me is Jaguars long snapper Ross Matisic, lifelong, or should I say, at least over your three seasons in Duval. Yeah. Wits ice cream fan. Big, big Wits fan. First time I had it, I haven't eaten any other ice cream in Jacksonville. Really? Just Wits. Well, yeah, except Hagen Dawson in the stadium, but that's a Coach P thing, so. Maybe one day he'll convert. The beauty of the scoop is so we don't really talk Jaguars too much, All but right. if, if you are going to bring up Coach P, I've got to ask. Did you know about the Hagen Dazs coming in when he first shows up? Or when did you say, oh my God, all the rumors are true, this guy so, and the ice cream, it's, it's so a I thing. So I think the first time that I actually heard about it was when Trevor, when Coach P first got to the facility, Trevor did a, uh, he brought Hagen Dazs in like a Hagen Dazs yeah. van or something and threw him an ice cream party. And then I had uh, Luke Thompson, another one of our cross teams coaches, is like, yeah, he's only Hagen Dazs the whole time. And then we would travel on the road, and we would have like little Hagen Dazs ice creams really? that they would scoop out for us instead of the hotel brand. I'm like, alright, this guy's a Hagen Dazs guy. Like the pre-made ones with like the, with the no, spoon. No, they're like the, the pint ones, you know, like, probably yeah. about that big. And, and you, you know, guys get not, them. Not the huge two gallon ones. It's a little small one. And everyone gets one. Like that's as you get off the bus. Yeah, yeah. After dinner, they eat. You know, they're all there. So vanilla or what flavor? Vanilla or chocolate, but I'm a vanilla guy. And it's, I yeah. think it's like French vanilla. There's like two vanillas, right. and it's a certain vanilla, so. Yeah. Well, I see you went with the vanilla today. I did. What, Big what is what is the scoop today? So I went with the I went with the vanilla ice cream, vanilla custard with uh, Reese's cups with some sea salt caramel on top. Ooh, yeah, big caramel guy. Yeah. Well, I got the Samoa scoop of the day. So cheers. Cheers. To, cheers to today's episode of the finally scoop. Finally dig in. Yes. The, the waiting, waiting is the hardest part, my friend. So Ross, tell me the. Are you from, because I've always wondered this, are you from Ohio or are you from Texas? So, my dad and I didn't say this. From Youngstown, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Okay, Northeast Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up there, lived there until I was nine. Okay. And then when I was nine, my dad said we're going south. He had family in Dallas. Moved to Dallas and grew up in McKinney, Texas. So, I claim McKinney as home, but mm. my dad is, hey, I mean, whenever somebody asks you, you're from Youngstown. He's prideful in that, so uh, so I'm from Youngstown, but I claim Texas. But Youngstown, like football tradition. I mean, the, right. the Soup Brothers are from Stoops, there. Yeah. Youngstown, the Thirty for Thirty. Right. Yeah. So football was that always a Madison family thing? Always, yeah, always. So my uh, my dad played at Bowling Green, and uh, I grew up wanting to be a quarterback. And he said, "Well, quarterbacks aren't middle linebackers, so you're going to play running back and middle linebacker." So I did that, and. Uh, yeah. Was he your coach? No, he wasn't. He was always kind of hands off, you know. He didn't want to ever want us to have success because he was coaching. So he's always kind of like, I'll help you when you want help. But, uh, you know, I'm just here for support, which is really cool to have a dad like that. Especially with three brothers. Yep. You, you can't pick favorites. <clears throat> nope. Like I know, like, even me, like, my parents weren't actively coaching my brother or sister. Yeah. But they even coached kindergarten rec for them. Yeah. But they didn't for me. And I remember being like, well, you didn't do that three years right, ago. Right, yeah. If you have three brothers, you're trying to be the coach for all of them. You're running around yeah. town all, you know, everywhere. So you can't be in two places at once. So parents would go back and forth, especially when uh, my brothers were all playing college ball. There's a lot of games where my dad would come to Baylor and my mom would go to Rice or TCU. And so, especially now, even now with Jacksonville, you know, mm -hmm. having a brother at TCU. So. so there's three of you guys. There's three of us, yep. Give me the quintessential story that defines the dynamic of the Madison brothers. Um, I'm gonna be honest. What what is quintessential? So like, <laughs> like, give me a story. Like, did you guys like get into like trouble together? Yeah. So we were. Um, Are you rolling around in the dirt? Like, like yeah, what type so of would, dynamic uh, we got? Yeah, we uh, 
if there's a, if there's any like thing going on in the neighborhood, any scuffles, you, you know the Majestic Boys are involved. You know, uh, everyone in the neighborhood definitely knew where we lived. Um, we're loud. We're always outside, and my mom's probably always looking for us growing up. Um, but you know, we just we just like to be out, like, like like to be outside and have fun. We're in the woods. We're playing basketball. We're playing football on the street. Um, yeah, that's about it. What's the age gap? So my older brother's two years older than me. My younger brother's three years younger than me. So I'm in the middle, middle child getting no love. So any middle children out there, you, you know what it's like. Um, but yeah. Now you reminded me before we started filming. Make sure you're eating your ice cream, by the way. Yeah, I don't, don't want to. This be, is a conversation. Okay, you're right, good. Right. You can have your ice cream, and we can edit stuff out too. All right. um, I thought all three of you were long snappers. So it's no. only the, the young you and your younger yep. brother. How yep. on earth do you two become long snappers? Funny story, actually. Okay, let's so let's hear. You take a second, mm -hmm. eat that caramel. I know that's a lot. So, I walked on to Baylor. Mm -hmm. for, I, had, I had some small D one offers, but I was like, hey, you know, I want to play in front of three thousand people, hundred thousand people on Saturdays. I'm, I'm a big football fan. Always wanted to do that. So I got a preferred walk on to Baylor, and I was scout team linebacker. Went there mm -hmm. for linebacker, and. Um, I was like six string, didn't play at all. I was getting beaten on scout team. My roommate was the punter and him and our long snapper were always just messing around, having a good time. And I'm over here dying in practice. I'm like, this is not fair. Like I want to do that, right? So uh, our long snapper, my freshman year when I was redshirted, got drafted by the Lions in the sixth round, Jimmy Landis. And I was like, you can get drafted for being a long snapper. Like I'm working so hard, you're just doing that. And you got drafted. Um, so then I asked him for a few pointers. And at the time, Art Browse was our head coach. And he was like, hey, if you start in the fall, we don't have a long snapper, I'll give you a full ride. So I said, deal, worked with my, my roommate, our punter, and uh, ended up starting and getting the job. And so now I know what the guys feel like when they look over and see, you know, me and Logan hanging out on the sideline during practice. But, um, you know, definitely traded in uh, being a linebacker for a long snapper. But it worked out, so. Now, then your brother sees this. And, and my brother. And he's just like, he I have TCU. to do this. Um, for tight end. Okay. Play tight end, and uh, I was like, hey, you should start learning how to long snap. And, you know, he was like, nah, I'm a tight end. I'm a tight end. I'm like, all right, well, you should learn how to long snap. And then uh, last year, I think it was last year, the year before, he became a long snapper as well. So he played, played tight end and then long snap too. And he started um, as the TCU starting long snapper, and they had that great year last year where, you know, they went to the national championship and everything like that. And, uh, you know, kind of just followed in my footsteps, kind of accidentally did it, and, you know, perfect timing for him. And uh, so, yeah, I guess we're kind of two long snapping brothers now. But it's not like you guys like went to the camps. It's not like no. Logan was telling the story when we taped with him. Like Logan was telling the story of, you know, he was three or four years old. His grandfather was a punter at Navy and they see him out with the football punting. Right. It's not like you guys were no. long snapping no. in Youngstown. No, my grandfather always told me the easiest route to the NFL was, um, being a long snapper and uh thought it was a joke and i'm not saying by any means it was easy but you know here i am so not a bad gig nope as a goalie i, I feel that we're yep. like for soccer and lacrosse like we were off to the side and everybody else is running laps and yep. we're just like oh we're working on hand-eye coordination right. today it's like whenever we do conditioning i'm like well i only play one play at a time right i don't know you have to still run downfield right, too, so it's right. not like you know. It's oh, not yeah. like you're not working out. We're still athletes. I used to be an athlete, is what I said. Used to be an yeah. athlete. Good segue. Yeah. So let's let's backtrack a bit. McKitty is your adopted hometown. You, at least from social media, you're like super proud of McKinney High School, yep. McKinney, Texas. Yep. Why? Um, just such a great place to, to grow up. Um, looking back on it, in high school, I always wanted to leave McKinney, wanted to get out of there. And then the older you get, you're like, well, my parents did a pretty good job taking us here, getting us every, every opportunity we needed to succeed. And um, it's a place that's growing and growing. And, uh, you know, the town next to us is Frisco, and they have uh, the PGAs moving there. And oh, yeah. they're going to have a Ryder Cup there soon, hopefully. And just, just cool, you know, it's just a place that I like to call home, I'm proud of. And, you know, Texas is just good people and a good time, so. And you still keep in touch with the coaches, got yeah, guys absolutely. at the school? Right, absolutely. Which is impressive, because not a lot yeah. of people can say that. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I'm just, it's my home, right, so. Yeah. Now, you didn't just play football. No. What else did you play? I played baseball. Okay. Yeah, big baseball fan. Um, 
bigger fan back then than I am today. It's hard to keep up with now, but uh, love the Rangers. My whole mom's family is from uh, Wrigleyville, so big Cubs fan as well. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me stop you there because now I'm remembering that this is actually at the top of my list of my notes, okay. and I forgot to ask this because a couple of the ten tenors brought this up to me. Okay. Okay. Let's go through NFL, which I know is the Jags, mm-hmm. but that's besides the point. NBA, MLB, NHL, college. Right. Who are your favorite teams? Because you're all over the place. Everywhere. So. Being from, we'll start with NFL, okay? Mm-hmm. In Youngstown, you either Steelers fan or a Browns fan. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was a Browns fan, so I was a Browns fan. Okay. Growing up, it was hard to be a Browns fan. Yes. Okay? Move to Dallas, you can't not be a Cowboys fan in Dallas, especially when you're nine right. years old, Tony Romo, T.O., I mean, the whole thing, Jason Witten. Um, Coach so, Dave Campo. Right. I mean, so many, so many, like, legends in dallas um i actually played on michael irvin's son's pee football team oh no way so we'd have michael irvin come coach us um but just grew up a cowboys fan never missed a game coming here now nah, i could kill us with the cowboys now um extra extra motivation when you guys beat them, beat them oh i texted year. all my friends you know right away right in the locker room after that incredible game but um so nfl obviously um, we'll go to college. College grew up a big Ohio State Buckeye fan. Being from Ohio, Jim Tressel, the sweater vest, yeah, Troy Smith, Hedgen Jr., um, Terrell Pryor. You couldn't tell me anything about the Buckeyes because I was the biggest Buckeye fan there ever was. And then when I was getting in college, I still was. Um, went to the national championship where Coach Meyer won with the Buckeyes in Dallas. Um, but then, you know, when, I, when they didn't want me, um, I kind of said, all right, well, find somewhere else that I like. And, you know, Baylor was close to home. They wanted me. And uh, now I'm Baylor Bear. Okay. So I take pride in that. But right well, pin in that real quick. So you did try to get a preferred walk on at Ohio State. I applied for school there and I didn't get into school. Oh. So I was like, you know what? If I, my grades aren't good enough or for whatever reason you don't want me, you know, that ship sailed. It's a sign. So, uh, my cousin's always kid with me saying like, you know, after college, you'll, you'll come back to the good side. I'm like, no, I'm done with the Buckeyes. Um, but uh, now- I'm Little just, little did you know what was actually in your future right. on that front. Exactly, yeah. Walked into another one. Um, but right now, the biggest TCU thing you can find, it's Baylor's you know, number one rival, but you know, blood's thicker than anything. So anyway, it's part of my brothers, you know, I wear purple for them, which hurts a little bit, but you know, it's for the greater cause. Um, MLB, uh, it was probably Indians and Cubs, and then I came to Dallas, and I kind of became a Rangers fan. Which Cubs is because your mom's from Chicago. My, my mom's whole family is in Wrigleyville. Okay. Like, they are Cubs, Cubs, Cubs. We, we used to go watch them, watch Sammy Sosa play in a year when him and McGuire were going back and forth for the home run uh, title, but uh, just such an iconic team. And it, yep. if you're not a Cubs fan from Chicago, so... It was cool seeing them win, win a, a World Series. And then NBA, um, the, you know, one of the biggest LeBron fans you'll find being from Northeast Ohio. I had his bubble gum, I had his jersey, I had his shoes. The lightning lemonade. Lightning lemonade, Legit. yeah. You can be the kid and the king. Um, but just awesome, I love LeBron. Now, I, I don't really follow him anymore. After he left Cleveland originally, I wasn't like a Heat fan. Mm-hmm. I just kind of was just like, just like the game. And then uh, when he came back to Cleveland, Cavs fan all the way. Um, such a fun year, you know, rooting for them. Seeing him bring a title back to uh, Cleveland was really cool. But now I'm just 100% diehard. You can't tell me nothing. Mavs fan for life. Really? Dallas Mavericks. Complete. Complete. Shit. Like, Even after everything they went through this year. Yep. Yeah, well, still- that. Yeah, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna touch on that. But um, just Mavs fan. I think we have a bright future. Luka Doncic is just awesome. We'll see what happens with free agency, but hopefully we can keep Kyrie. I, I, didn't, I didn't mind him that much, um, but, you know, if we can get a big man or uh, something like that, it would be great. But I follow all the forums, everything Dallas, Dallas Mavericks all the way. So Forums? Are you still like a, a blogger? Like yeah, you're, you're I'm still, on Twitter. I'm, you know, yeah. Mavs fan for life. That's what we call ourselves. So uh, You're on the, the message Mavs. boards? Yep, I there love it. There's still Ma- Mavericks mess- message boards out there? There are. You can find there. some blogs online, but I'm just Mavs all the way. And then when it comes to hockey, I'm not a big hockey fan. Um, never played hockey, but the Stars had a great year this yeah. year. So um, you're not going to catch me watching hockey on a Tuesday night. But, you know, the playoffs, Stars, Western Conference Finals, you know, I'm going to turn on and tune in and order some wings, ragtime, have them ready to go. 
and watch the game. So the funny thing is, so when you actually boil it down, outside of the Cubs and the Browns, like or the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. it's pretty Ohio, Texas. Ohio, state. Texas. Yep. Just my family in Dallas. So I have to ask, just because while we're on the subject, you know yeah. the Twitter account that's it po- they post outrageous news headlines, and then yeah. they say, "Did this happen in Ohio or Florida?" Do you, do you know about that website? Not really. Okay, you're gonna have to go look it up. Okay. Because I have to I, like being. Are you, are you about to quiz me on something? No, 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 not oh. at all. No, not oh. at all. <laughs> but being from Ohio, living in Florida, and then also having roots in da- in Texas, yeah. Like the crazy headlines, they're almost always Ohio, Florida, or Texas, and and you've lived in all three. Yep. You, you have the rare distinction yep. that I, others I can, don't uh, have. I could probably do pretty well on that on that site. So. Let's talk Baylor a little bit. You said they were the one school mm-hmm. that wanted you. Um, so you, you, how many D1 offers did you have in high school? So I had no D1 single A, but I had about, I don't know, 10 to 13 D1 double A offers. Okay. The biggest one probably being like Stephen F. Austin. Mm-hmm. So um, offers everywhere from, you know, Northern Colorado to Stony Brook and up in New York. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to leave home. I'm, and I'm really close to my family, my friends. So... Baylor was just an opportunity that, um, you know, kind of worked out. And my parents were all in, willing to help me, you know, go to school there. And, you know, it worked out. When they tell you you have to be a walk-on and they talk about the walk-on <clears throat> mentality, describe that. Yeah, it's just like a, a chip on your shoulder, right? You, you're not going to get the first opportunity as the other guys. But I strongly believe the best players play. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that – when, whenever you get to that level and you and you're like you're all working out together and practicing together, you realize, hey, wait a minute, like I'm better than some of these guys. The coaches probably don't see it yet, but like in your head, you know, I, I you know I think I belong here. And you start. It was hard at first because you don't think you belong because you know you got to pay for school. But once you discover that, hey, I could play here and I could you know I could ball off this level, um, a new a new confidence comes over your comes over you and allows you to perform, makes you more comfortable, which is very similar to the NFL, right? When you, when I came undrafted, it was always guys that are drafted. Um, but you, you know, as soon as you put the pads on and you start playing with them, hey, I belong here. You know, I could do this. I can be a contributor to the team. So, um, yeah, that's kind of that mentality of like, you know, overlook me, you know, I'll make you pay for your mistakes. I was going to ask, are you one of those who like bangs your chest and says like walk on mentality, I carry it in everything I do because of the experience you had in college? Uh, not really. I don't really talk about it much, but um, definitely I'm proud of it. I saw like Baker Mayfield, he had drafted one overall. He was wearing like a walk on shirt. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty cool. And I, almost, yeah. I almost bought one. I didn't do it, but <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. So now at Baylor, um, I didn't realize. So Art was still the coach right. when you got there. Um, obviously, that's some turmoil. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, for you as a young college kid, and there's coaching changes, and you probably see it now. Yeah. Where the, these kids transfer at the drop of a hat. What was that experience like, and why did you stick it out at Baylor? Um, yeah, it kind of happened out of nowhere, really. Like, we heard of some news and some news here, and then, you know, we kind of just got a, in May, we were all home for, like, our little summer break. We had three weeks off, and. Coach Browse texted us and said, hey, like, I love all you guys, but, you know, sometimes, the, you know, the bad guys win or whatever he said and say, hey, I'm no longer going to be your coach. You're going to find that out in a couple hours. So we were all kind of shocked. And then we brought in um, our interim coach was Jim Grove, who was an awesome man and an awesome coach. And, you know, he brought some stability and leadership to us <laughs> during a crazy time because, you know, when you're a college kid and you lose your coach, something subtle like that, you have no idea what's going to happen um, to your future. But we brought Jim Grove in and he did awesome and, cool to learn from him and watch watch him lead us and then after that we had Matt Rule come in and that was just the big difference maker for me um coach Rule taught me how to be professional uh he was a coach that really cared for you and his whole staff did they wanted what was best for you and at the time you know I didn't I'm not gonna say we butted heads by any means because I always enjoyed him but some of the things he made us do I was like why are we doing this why why do I why can't I be on my phone in the training room why does my hat need to be off during a team meeting? You know, it's things like this. Why do I got to carry a water jug everywhere I go? But then when you get to the NFL and you see like just people wearing hats in team meetings and on their phone or just not, it just teaches you how to be a professional. And he um, coached under, under um, Tom Coughlin. So he brought a lot of his, uh, you know, roles from their locker room to our locker room. And it was just cool to learn how to be professional and it just, 
I said, you know, whenever I made the team, I texted them and said, hey, like, I can't thank you enough for preparing me to be professional, even though I wasn't a professional. And that was one thing that, um, that was pretty cool. So are you now a Nebraska fan too? I am. One of my good friends, Garrett McGuire, is uh, the receivers coach. Oh, okay. And uh, I play with him at Baylor. And, you know, we got a few coaches from Baylor that are now with Nebraska too. So go Big Red, is that what they say? Yeah, go, yeah, big, go Red. big Red. Oh, there's so, a, you have a Big Ten team yeah, that is in Ohio go. State. Get after those Buckeyes. Um, so I, don't, I think what people don't realize is like, so you alluded to it. You go in scout team linebacker. You did still play a little bit of linebacker. I did. Later in your years. So uh, your career totals, I believe it's one sack, yep. one tackle for loss. Can you give us the story for each? Yeah, so I was um, – I went to uh, – my junior senior year, I went back to my, – my, my junior year, I was like, hey, I miss playing linebacker. I'm on scholarship. Um, but football is just fun to me. Like, I'm just kind of a football guy that likes competition and the long time for life wasn't really cutting it for me at the time. Um, so I was like, hey, coach, can I play linebacker again? Got a few starts my junior year. Um, Clay Johnson was in front of me who got drafted by the Rams in like the sixth or seventh round. But he got he went down with an injury during camp, so I got the nod. Um, did that and had, had fun. And then going into my senior year, I was like, hey, you know, I really want to focus on going to the NFL for a, long, for a long snapper. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket, you know, we'll see what happens. And, Coach Rolls like, all right, if you want to do it, go for it. I support you, um, and I'll help you any way you can. And then about game six, Clay Johnson, the guy that started over me, that tore his ACL, I mean, that got drafted towards ACL against Texas Tech. And uh, they started moving uh, running backs to linebackers, stuff like that. And I was like, hey, Coach, I know the defense. Um, last six games of the year, can I come back and play linebacker? He's like, absolutely. Um, let's do it. So I did that, and then on senior day playing against Texas our uh, our other linebacker that went down with a broken hand um, they threw me in there in the first quarter and I was able to get a sack and a TFL so it was kind of like at the end of a full circle and the end of a chapter for me a linebacker down. so they were both in the same game yeah and it was your final regular season game yep yeah. so it was, it was a pretty cool little deal that you know kind of ended the chapter of linebacker like that for me but uh, no, I had fun with it and uh the guys that started over me, a linebacker, and all in the NFL playing linebackers. So uh, when I see them, you know, pregame, I give them a hard time. But no, it was, it was pretty cool. Texas, I know we talked with Walker, and as a Texas kid, yeah, and he did it. He's kind of spurned Longhorn Nation. He went to Stanford. Yeah. So for you, on the other side of that, was there any sort of pride that both those stats and your final oh, game were against Texas? You got the horns down all the way. Um, no matter where you, which school you play for in Texas, you know, the big brother is always UT. Yeah. And anytime you can, you know, get a sack or a tackle or have a good game against them and beat them, there's always, you know, something that you can hang your hat on. So, What is the story of when you got your scholarship? Did they do anything special? <clears throat> do we have a Twitter moment out there? No. Or? So it's kind of like it was kind of surreal. Um, we were getting ready to go play in the uh, Motel 6 Cactus Bowl. Chase Field in Arizona and me and my roommates were hanging out at the house and we heard that Coach Rule was at the facility so we're like hey Sean Tykes hey coach we come here and introduce ourselves to you he's like yeah come on up so we went up there and there's about five coaches in a room kind of hanging out real like low key and uh so he'd just been named the head coach yeah and maybe like a week prior and like hey it was like a Tuesday night you know school was done we just you know had bowl practices or whatever and went up there and Coach Rule was in the room. We're all hanging out talking, and he's like, "Hey, are you uh, you Ross, the long snapper?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "All right, well, you're on full ride now." And I was just kind of like, like so low key like that. And I walked out of the room, and I was like, "He's putting me on full ride." So I called my parents, and uh, kind of like the same way I called them whenever I made the team. I was like, "Hey, y'all sitting down for this one?" Uh, but you know, they were all crying and emotional. But it was pretty cool. It was a good deal and a weight off their shoulders for sure. Yeah. Now, when you say made the team, are you talking about the Jags here? I'm talking about here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, one step back, draft process. What right. goes into the pre-draft process for a long snapper? It's uh, a lot of training, right? So, like, you you know, you know, train with all the other guys. Like, you're going to be doing your 225 test, run your 40, you know, do your pro agility, all that kind of stuff. But on the side, you're just making sure that you can snap a ball clean and and get your footwork right because in college you don't block in NFL you block so making sure you can block and move so you know spend all that time working on that and getting prepared for my pro day and the next thing you know hey pro day's postponed two weeks 
hey, pro day's postponed two weeks. Hey, pro day's, you know, they, hey, guys, we're not going to have a pro day. So uh, I don't know if it benefited me or hurt me that they only could grade me off my game film, but um, that was something for sure that was kind of a letdown. But, you know, it was COVID and kind of a freak thing. And so we always get in the locker room asking about 40s. I'm like, I didn't run one. No one ever knows how fast or slow I am. So hopefully I don't, I don't have to run one ever again. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely – it was a weird year. So right. one of those kind of things. Did you have any contact with the Jags? No, they just called me about a week before the draft and asked for a good draft they sell. Um, I probably had 10 teams call and reach out for one, so uh, didn't think anything of it. And then next thing you know, talking to Jody and kind of worked out from there. So, so they just called you right after the draft's over? Or? Yep. Yeah. Called me and I was like, yeah, let's do it. So. And at that point, remind me, again, 2020, it feels like 18 years right. ago. You were the only long – or was there another long no, snapper? No, we have another long snapper here. Okay, so you're in a competition. Yeah. Did you think that you were going to be the Jaguars' week one opening day long snapper? Um, you know, there was ups and downs during camp, right? Everyone does. But uh, I just thought I put my best foot forward, and I said the only reason why I don't make this team is I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. That's what I told myself. So if that's the reason, that's the reason. But I'm not going to let anything else uh, deter me. So – walked into you know after they made the final cuts and everything and you know I don't know if anyone has tells you this but they don't tell you you make the team right so it's like you're sitting around and if you're still in Jacksonville on Monday you show up to work there's no like hey congratulations like let's roll um the way I found out is Logan texted me and just said hey congrats man and I'm sitting in a hotel I'm sitting in the hotel playing PJ on my Xbox I was like bro what are you talking about and he's like, yeah. So that was really cool. But um, first meeting we had on Monday, I walked into the facility, and our coordinator was like, are you surprised you're still here? And I was like, no, not at all. And he was like, good answer. So, there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, since you bring up Logan, you were still in the hotel at that point. Yeah. You did live with Logan and Mary. I did. Right after, yeah. Was it right after that? Yeah, so like uh, they let me stay in the hotel for like two weeks, I think. And I called my mom, dad, and girlfriend, and I was like, hey, can you guys load my truck up and bring it out? I need a car out here. Uh, I got to return the rental, and I'm not paying for it. So <laughs> they they drove over, overnight, drove it all the way out here. And um, after, like, week two, I think they were like, hey, you got to find a home now. Can you get out of the hotel? <laughs> so uh, Logan being Logan, the guy he is, graciously opened his arms and his home to me, which I may have took advantage of. It was probably, like, three or four weeks in. He was like, hey. You're going to live somewhere else. Now, <laughs> and I found a place. But um, it was cool, kind of a cool timing. His wife, uh, Minger, was you know, like a, a night nurse. Mm-hmm. So she would work from like 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Right. So we get home from practice. She would just be leaving. So we'd either go fish or we would door dash food and just play Call of Duty all night. So it was like Call of Duty all over again. So, uh, yeah, I got real comfortable with them during that time. And, and you go to Lulu's. Yep. We'd go to Lulu's R. right R. there. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. I wish they were still there. We'd go there, and uh, no, nah, we just we just became real close. And that was a fun little three-week stretch we had. It was like having college all over again. Did you fish or hunt before you met Logan? Yeah, I did. Okay. But definitely went up a, a notch with him. So. Yeah. Has to. Has, Has to, to, right? You live in Jacksonville, and you hang around Logan enough, he'll be doing the stuff he does. So. I do love how the Jag social team really plays off the friendship between you two. Because it is, like, truly a friendship. Like, would you say, like, he's your oh, best friend on the team? Yeah, for sure. And, we, you know, we definitely go through our times, right? We'll have times where um, we'll get in fights, and then the training staff will say that we broke up that day, and we won't talk to each other for hours. And then I'll see him, you know, 7 a.m. the next morning, and we'll hug it out. But, uh, you know, definitely one of my better friends. And, um, you know, he's a good friend and role model to have. You know, he's kind of like an older brother to me. Kind of showed me the ropes and really taught me how to be a professional. Um, I feel like that's, you know, I'm pretty lucky. A lot of guys don't have that in the NFL. But someone that, uh, you know, luckily, you know, or, you know, we both got to resign. And he was a big reason why, you know, being able to play with him, he makes my job easy. He's one of the best in the league and just a joy to be around. So anytime you can have fun at work, uh, already had a fun job, but, you know, with your best friends, how can you pass that up? So. What was the story behind your extension? Did, do they call you up? <clears throat> Did they just send you an email or? Um, Your agent no, calls it was, you? Yeah, or? it was kind of a crazy thing. So uh, me and my agent, I got real close my second year in the league. 
um, dealing with some some things. Um, but uh, he called me. It was uh, in April before the draft. He called me. It was like I saw his name on my phone. And I was like, great. You know, here we go again. But uh, you know, he was like, hey, this isn't bad news. Nobody wants to talk to you about some, something that happened. Jaguars want to reach their hands out and offer you an extension. And at the time, you know, getting an extension after two years is kind of a kind of a rare thing. But um, I, I can't know a place I'd rather be than Jacksonville. Just the people, the town, um, big golfer and fisher. So if you can do that all year round, new facility, um, Coach P, Trevor, and the guys, you know, we're heading in the right direction. I got to stay with Logan. So I was like, hey, where do I sign? We got it all taken care of and I was ready to go. Did you know anything about Jacksonville when you were drafted? I knew nothing. So when I first uh, got the call that I was coming to Jacksonville, me and my dad were just messing around on YouTube. I typed in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, and no? all it showed was downtown. Okay. So I was like, oh, they got a lot of bridges, you know, water. I didn't even know where Jacksonville was on a map. Couldn't tell you. But um, it, Jacksonville's not as big as people think it is. Like, it's huge, but it's not, right? Like, there's different sections. And I like to hang out around the beach. So... You hang around Third Street the whole time. It's, it's not. You see a lot of the same faces, a lot of the same people, eat a lot of the same restaurants. But right. no, I really, it's really become my home, and and I love it here. So, all right, you ready for your rapid fire? Let's go. Let's go. So, first things first, I'm gonna give you four fast food restaurants. I want you to rank them. Okay. Culver's, Whataburger, Panera, and Chipotle. All right, I'm gonna go Whataburger mm-hmm. from Texas. I don't see that coming. Chipotle, Culver's, and what was the last one? Panera. Panera. I like Panera, but, you know, I'm up on this gluten-free kick, so it's kind of hard to eat there. But uh, it's kind of hard to eat at all those places. But um, after high school games, we'd always go to Waterburger, so the memories, and then, you know, number two there is hard to beat. So but you are a Culver's fan. I love Culver's, yeah. Custard. The custard. I, I do love Culver's. Well, you got the Ohio, too. Do they have them in Ohio? You know, I was too young. I don't even no, know. No, I'm trying to think if they have them. Do they have them in Texas? Culver's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they don't in New Jersey. Oh, really? I didn't ever. I had never no, had I love Culver's. Culver's. You know, we yeah. used to go there where they have those butter burgers yeah. and uh, some cheese curds and uh, some custards. Hard to beat that. Absolutely. Uh, when did you learn how to do a Rubik's Cube? Ooh. So my, I would say probably junior year of high school. My cousin came in town and there was one sitting on the table all mixed up because I had bought one. I thought I was going to figure out. We're sitting here talking, and he's just like, you know, eating dinner or whatever. And next thing you know, he throws it on the table, done. And I was like, that was the coolest flex I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, if I do one thing over this next year, I'm going to learn how to solve that Rubik's Cube. So he, he kind of walked me through and tied it to me. And uh, all the crew managers in the, in the, in the, in, uh, for the Jaguars all have their thing really? back there. So I'll sit back there with them. And, you know, we got the two by twos, the three by threes, the four by fours. We got just, it's a nerd thing, but it's so much fun. And, Anytime I see one on a table when I'm eating dinner with some friends, I'm just like, yeah, watch don't it. Don't mind me. Yeah, don't mind me. We Time. were actually trying to crowdsource finding one to bring to this interview. Oh, really? Because I was like... Shit, I had it on my house. I got I, the speed one, the right... I got them all. I, I knew you needed to focus on the ice cream, oh, though, yeah. so that's why I was okay. like, I'm not going to do it. Um, I asked Logan the same question, so I'm going to ask it for you. You can only hunt or fish. Which one are you picking? Mm. You can only have one. <clears throat> I'm going to go fish. Mm-hmm. Whenever, whenever uh, I just, what did he say, hunting? Yeah, he said hunting. He said hunting, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go fishing. I just I just think you can't be being on the water. Anytime you're on the water, it's just, yeah, I was, went out there yesterday on my boat, and there's like just dolphins all around me. I'm like, this is the coolest thing in the world. So you have a boat now. I do, yeah. Was that with the with the big contract? Yep. Was that the first that thing? Was my, that was my little splurge myself. So I got a little boat and have fun. In and the words of Logan Cook? Even if you don't, you're not in the NFL, at yeah. least you have a boat. <laughs> at least you got a boat. Uh, two more. Um, these ones I asked Walker, too. Favorite golf course in Jacks to golf? All right. I'm going to throw one out there that no one's ever probably heard of. I'm going to go with Hyde Park. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know where Hyde Park yep. is? Hyde mm-hmm. Park is the unclaimed home of the Jacksonville Jaguars, a.k.a. me and Dewey. I was just going to say, Dewey is... Dewey is my golf partner. Yeah. Um, if we're not golfing on the course, we're playing golf on our Xbox together. Um, but that that's where I really fell in love with the game and just grinded to get better out there. So I park with Dewey. And then favorite golf course to attend, favorite golf tournament to attend? To attend? I mean, I've got to say the players. That, that's just... That's, that's well, you're, you're so from Texas, so there's a bunch of tournaments Right. I mean, too. the Byron Nelson's cool. So they actually moved the Byron Nelson to McKinney, my hometown, mm-hmm. 
and then the colonial on the four work is a nice one but I mean anytime you go to field like the players and you get to watch that those guys show up and struggle on 17 or you know it's just hard to beat that so yeah all right so the final question when you look back at little little Ross who moved from Youngstown to Texas just wanted to play football what are you most proud of since then um I'm most I'm probably most proud of the journey right like over time like you can get worn out with the game and and not load anymore and there's going to be ups and downs and days that you know you do good or you do bad but just showing up day in and day out just trying to get better every day it's cl as, as cliche as it sounds but if i were to like trying to think to my younger self it'd just be like attack every day to get your last and, and play the game like that and good things will happen so and that's the scoop hey thanks for having me on i really enjoyed it if you ever need a a witch sponsor from the scoop you know you have my instagram i need a shirt and everything but thanks for having me on i'll make sure you get one awesome. thanks for coming on rob absolutely